Hi, welcome back to Chemistry Connection. Today we're going to be making Cyclops Eye Bath Bombs. You will need to get together all your ingredients. You can buy them separately at makeyourown.buzz or you can purchase our bath bomb kit with all ingredients and supplies included. You will need 1.5 pounds of citric acid, 3 pounds of sodium bicarbonate, 2 ounces of refined shea butter, 2 ounces of SLSA powder, 4 ounces of cornstarch, and 4 ounces of cream of tartar, 2 ounces of almond oil, and 2 ounces of polysorbate 80. You will also need our 6 millimeter plastic bath bomb mold. Today we will be using our chromium green oxide and our fresh green mica. You will also need a fragrance oil of your choice. Today we will be using cinnamon pine cone. First, you will need to take your sodium bicarbonate and your citric acid and pour them into a bowl. Then you will need to mix well. If you have a sifter, you can use that now to get out all the clumps. If not, you can just do it with your hands. So you just need to get out all the clumps that there might be in these powders. Once you get all the clumps out, then you're going to put in your cornstarch, cream of tartar, and SLSA powder. You'll need to be very careful with the SLSA powder as it is very, very powdery and fluffy, and if you're not careful with it, it will go everywhere. So once you have all the powders in together, then you will mix them well, again being very careful to not make a mess everywhere with all of these powders. Once you have all the powders mixed together, then you will mix together your liquids. You will need to melt your shea butter in the microwave for 30 second intervals until it is completely melted. We'll take the melted shea butter and add in the almond oil and polysorbate 80. Then you will add in your fragrance oil. I did about one ounce, but you can do more if you would like. And then mix that together. So since we have two different colors for this bath bomb, I'm going to separate my powder mixture. I did about half and half, but I didn't end up needing as much of the white mixture as I had set aside. So I ended up mixing it with the green mixture later on. Next, you will add in your colorant. I just kind of eyeballed this, but I wanted to do only about half an ounce of color total. So I did about a fourth ounce of the chromium green and a fourth ounce of the fresh green. You want to add your colorant in with just the powder before you add in the liquid, or else you will have white clumps that don't have the color in it. When you add the colorant with just the powder, it's a lot easier to get it mixed in well. Then I'm going to take my liquid mixture and pour in about half into my green powder mixture. And then I'm going to mix it well. A good way to mix it is to kind of take the mixture in between your hands and rub it together to get out all the clumps. You don't want there to be big wet clumps, you want the entire mixture to be the same consistency and if you were to take some of the mixture and squeeze it in your hand you would want it to stay together and then i'm going to wash my hands so i don't get the green into my white mixture and then do the same thing mix it together with the liquids So to pack the bath bomb, we're going to take a, our white mixture and we're just going to put a tiny little bit onto one half of the bath bomb mold and then press it down. And then we're going to take a little bit of our green mixture and press it down on top of it so that it all stays and doesn't move around. 
then you're going to take both sides of the bath bomb mold and push them together with lots of the bath bomb mixture in between. You want it to be overpacked so that you get your entire bath bomb mold filled. And then once you have the entire bath bomb mold filled, you're going to press it together. Do not twist it or else it won't pack properly and it will all fall apart. So once you have the bath bomb mold packed tightly, then you're going to hold it sort of like a claw machine and pinch the top half of the bath bomb mold until it creates an air pocket and it slides off of the mold. Then you're going to flip it over into your other hand and do the same thing with the bottom half of the mold. Then you're going to, again, take your hand like a claw machine and carefully place it onto a piece of parchment paper. I'm going to let this play one more time at full speed just so you can see how I do it again. Like I said, I ended up not needing as much of the white mixture as I had created, so since it was white, I could just mix it in with the green mixture. I did end up having to add a little bit more color since I was adding more white to create the same color. So you're going to let your bath bombs cure for one to two days, and then we're going to add the pupils. So I did a tablespoon of isopropyl alcohol and a teaspoon of activated charcoal. This ended up being a little bit too liquidy, and it actually activated the bath bombs where I placed this black pupil. So you want yours to be a little bit more thick, um, so less isopropyl alcohol and more charcoal. So you're just going to take a paintbrush, you're going to add a little dot on top of the bath bomb to create a pupil to look like an eyeball. Let those sit and dry for a few hours, maybe a day, and then your bath bombs are done. Enjoy your spooky Cyclops eye bath bombs. If you do try this out, make sure to tag us on Facebook and Instagram so we can see your work. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for more easy DIY bath and body tutorials.